And we are live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Greetings. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Let me know where you're coming from. Let me know if you've been rocking for 51 consecutive weeks. Who we got here? We got Brandy Callahan, Janine Wilkins, all the way in Alaska. Demetrius Scott, Alabama. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We got Jay Wilburn. Good morning. In Denton, Texas. Alex uh, Ver Veracci, my man. John Herricks, uh, Monica Welch, e um, Ebony. Oh, man, it went so quick on me. We got Letitia Anderson Davis, my former student back in the 90s in the building. We got Jackie Solomon, Henry Anderson, Victoria Ruffin Atkins, my man Cedric Cooper, Superintendent Finch, T.B. Summer, Ebony R. Davis Stevenson, Principal Siobhan Jackson, Kimberly Isaac Burrell, Orlando Gunn, Miss Catching is in the building. My man, Principal Josh Tovar, you know, he does a, a, a podcast in the morning at nine. So be sure to check him out um, with, with his team, with his team of uh, principals. So that's um, nine o'clock. Just go to jo Josh Tovar's page and you'll see him. There's my wife, Kimberly Broughton, Kefele in the building. Hannah Taylor's in the building. Lana Nieves is in the building. But again, with, with Josh, just go to Josh Tovar on Facebook. And then you'll see um, you'll, you'll see the previous broadcast. In fact, I share them so you can go to my page. Who else we have here? Venice Lewis is in the building. M Mr. Flatter's in the building. Maria Hazard is in the building. Hit that share button as you come in. Let them know my man, Lewis Saunders, is in the building, East Orange. We were colleagues at Ashland School in East Orange back in the 90s. Man, where'd the time go? My man, Sean Hurt, is in the building. He does his broadcast now at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, so he just wrapped it up. But go to his page because he's got a two-day institute that he's doing. I don't know if he's using that language, but a two-day institute which is beyond what he does on the uh, Saturday morning broadcast, which used to be Sunday. This is one where you pay a little, just a little bit of change, but he's going to give you some high powered stuff. So make sure that you go to Sean Hurt's page and, and register for his academy. It's coming up in May. Who else we got here? We got Amanda Davis, Melissa Allison, Crystal Nolan Brandon. We got Leroy Hall, Stephanie Kavner. Keep it coming. Hit the share button. Let them know. Let them know. We're on four platforms at Principal Cafele and at Virtual AP Leadership Academy on Facebook, at Principal Cafele on Twitter, at, at Virtual AP Leadership Academy on YouTube. We got it covered. There's my guy, Kofi Woodall, is in the building. Sheikah Houston, Principal Sheikah Houston is in the building. She has a podcast. I think she's, man, I don't want to mess this up, but I think it's on Tuesday nights at seven, right? That's Sheikah Houston. You see her name in the in the uh, thread on Facebook. That's uh, Tuesday nights at seven. Check out her podcast. We got a lot of high powered educators that come on the thread, come on the program, the Academy on Saturday mornings, but they've got their own programs. And I want to make sure that I shout them out as well, because we just we're just spreading the love, right? Spreading the information, spreading the knowledge. We don't have to confine it to ourselves. She said, that's right. So seven o'clock p.m. Every Tuesday night, I'm going to be on there, too, by the way. That's in May. We'll let you know more about that. My man, Darren. Freedom Green from Trenton, New Jersey is in the building. Michael Carr is in the building. Tony McClenney is in the building. My man, Gregory Riley, where you been, sir? I never seen you on one of these before. It's 51 weeks in, but you are in salute. That's my guy, Hotep, Greg, Greg Riley, East Orange homie, New Jersey. Who else we have here? We have uh, Cammy Berry's in the building. Todd Felton from the Bronx in the building doing his thing. We got Phil 7 2020. I'm ready, she said. Let's go. Hit that share button as you come in. Hey, somebody, let me know. You've been with me for 51 weeks? Have you been with me for 51 weeks? That's a lot of weeks for something that was supposed to be for 18 weeks, but here we are. We're doing it for 51. 
Greg Riley said, I've been with more, been on more than several. Would ask about you. Tell him I said hit him up and tell him come on here right now. Cause he he he's he's watched some of these, right? So Kathy Walker's in the building. I'm getting ready to get it started. Mr. Delphonic is in the building, right? So we got everybody here. We got Tra Tracy Quatrocky. I know I was, I know I but butchered that up, right? But you know something, folks? It is 11 o'clock. And that means it's time to get it rocking and rolling. So one more time, hit that share button, hit that retweet button. Let them know it's that time, 11 o'clock on Saturday mornings, Eastern Daylight Time. And with that being said, good morning, greetings, and welcome to week number 51 of the virtual AP. Leadership Academy. And look here, y'all. I don't know about you. I don't know. I hope I know. I think I know. I mean, I feel your energy coming through the computer. But if I could speak for me, I'm going to let you know how I feel. I'm on fire. Y'all didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. See, I, I need the neighbors to hear me because, see, I want them to feel what I feel. See, see, if we're going to change the world, man, we got to bring the right energy. So so let, let me just let you know one more time. See, right now at 11.02, I'm on fire. Woo! That's how I'm feeling, y'all. See, I'm blazing. Let me tell you why. I'm on fire because I'm on this broadcast. That's why. I'm on fire because you're here. That's why. I'm on fire because I'm trying to do my part to effectuate change in this industry. So I can't come in here with extinguished fire. The fire doused. I'm down. I'm depressed. I'm feeling sorry for myself. I can't bring that kind of energy and expect to be the leader that I want to be. See, so I just want you to feel the same thing. You hit that share button as I go into my, my quick motivational message. My motivational message today is protecting your determination. And I could kind of add a synonym to that, protecting your drive, right? So let's just throw them both in there. Protecting your drive and your determination. What am I saying? I'm saying it is easy. Hear me, somebody. It is easy for you to lose your drive. That's easy. I mean, that, that doesn't require rocket science. It is easy for you to lose your determination. That's, e that's simple to do. All you got to do is be around the wrong people. All you have to do is step into the wrong space. All you have to do is face adversity. All you got to do is meet a challenge that seems overwhelming. And it's easy at that juncture to lose your drive, to lose your determination. And that's why you got to protect it. You got to guard it. You got to shield it. You got to lock it down. See, it, you, you, you got to own your determination. You got to own your drive. You can't let people, you can't let circumstances, you can't let situations deprive you of your determination, of your drive to change the world or to at least change your own situation, that's on you. That's your call. So protect it, guard it, shield it. Don't let anything or anybody take it. That's my message. Now let's go to my word of the day slash week. My word of the day, focus. Yeah, simple word, focus. You got to be here. Look, I'm talking to somebody on this call right now. And, and I'm saying to somebody out there, you letting stuff over here take away your focus. You let things over here distract you. You letting things back here interfere. You letting things up here discourage you. Look, if you are going to be optimally effective at what you're doing as a leader, an assistant principal, or even the principal, or the superintendent, or whomever, the teacher, because I know we got teachers watching. 
I'm saying you got to maintain and sustain your focus. See, I ain't worried about over there. I know what's happening, but I ain't worried about it. I know I ain't worried about what's over here. I know what's happening, but I'm not worried about it because I am too focused on being a, being a better version of myself each and every day. See, I, see it, whatever my contentment was yesterday, I'm trying to be better today. And, and however effective I am today, not just on this broadcast, but just the overall day, I'm striving to be better. Word I don't like strive, by the way, to be better tomorrow. See, I'm focused on being the best me, the best version of myself, the best version of my leadership. I'm saying to you, you got to bring the best version of your leadership. Focus. That's my word of the day. Let's get to it. I got my quick announcements. I'm going to go through them quick because I got a lot to talk about. Number one, uh, congrats to all the folks getting these positions, man. I've been getting a lot of emails, inboxes, DMs, Principal Cafele. I got the job. We got Marlana, uh, thank you. Got Marlana Valentine is on the call this morning. Um, I don't typically shout out at this point of the presentation, but I just saw her name, and you know she does her podcast. That's also a principal colleague. She does her podcast, Marlana. Right today, I can't remember right now. I think it's Mondays, but yeah, right today in there, so I know, and then, so I can make sure the people know to check you out. So, so, so now getting back. Congrats to all the folks getting these jobs. These leadership positions, these new chapters of leadership, good job to you. Now, you know what you got to do as you're in there and certainly stay locked into this broadcast. Even if you now principal, this is still for you. Right. Let's keep it moving. Um, I got an institute coming up. I do this every year. This is the fourth consecutive year now. The Principal Cafele School Leadership Institute, July 13 and 14. It's just a little bit of money because it's a little extra from what we do here. But um, July 13 and 14 from 1230 to 330, three hours both days. Again, July 13 and 14. Go to principalcafele.com. Scroll down to the announcements portion of the um of, of my page and you will see it right there with the link to register. Just go on and register July 13 and 14. Remind you of that every week. Next, tomorrow night, nine o'clock, I'll be on eight black hands with my man, Principal Sharif El Mecki and his crew. That'll be uh, it, it'll be on Facebook Live, Twitter Live, but I will share it to my page and you will see it right there. Right. So just uh, tomorrow night. After you finish watching, uh, what's 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 the, what's that show we watch with Queen Latifah? Um, the Equalizer. So right after the Equalizer, come on, so I could do some equalizing, right? So that'll be at um nine o'clock, right? Right, you can come right to my page because I'm gonna share it there at uh, and that's Eight Black Hands with Sharif El Mecki and others, right? His crew. Next, I uh, gotta say this one more: ASCD, the Empowered Principal Symposium. I'm the keynote speaker this week, April 21st. It's in the morning. Go to ASCD.org and register. ASCD.org. My guy, Principal Salome, Dr. Salome Thomas L. And, 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 and two of his crew will be closing it out. I'll open it. So come on and be with us there. That's ASCD, the Empowered Principal Symposium. And then there'll be just a, a, a half day of workshops uh, on there as well. Right? So. Um, Go to ASCD.org and register there. And I think that takes care of my announcements. Hit that share button. My, 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 um, I didn't say this, but I, you know, I gotta say this. The assistant principal 50, if you don't have it, it's, I mean, it's a perennial bestseller now, thanks to so many of you. And, 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 and this one, the aspiring principal 50, these are the two that we use for the institute. Make sure you get your hands on both Amazon. BarnesandNoble.com, ASCD, the publisher.org, principalcafele.com, wherever you want to get it, just get it, right? I'm done, y'all. Let's go. Chapter, I did all that before 1110. Chapter six. I'm still in chapter six. Last chapter of the book, by the way, that I'm covering, because I did seven and eight some months ago. I went out of sequence. So chapter six is called Engagement Comes Before Achievement. But you know, I, I got to be honest with you. I put together this agenda and all week long I'm tossing and turning when I'm sleeping. I'm uh I'm 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 preoccupied when I'm awake about this agenda. Like like since since last Monday. 
because I, I knew what I wanted to cover. I wanted to cover this, this, this particular chapter, but the topic, which I'm going to give you in a few minutes. Matter of fact, let me give you the topic. The topic is the intentionality of student achievement. And you see that on the screen, the intentionality of student achievement. And, and by the way, y'all, hit that share button for me. Let them know. Let them know. And Superintendent Finch told me to remind the folks I'm wearing my Jackie Robinson, number 42. You know, this. yes, the 15th was Jackie Robinson Day. Every day in the major leagues, everybody wears number 42. Teams that didn't play that day, they played yesterday. Everybody wears, where we at, number 42. So that's what I'm wearing today, my Brooklyn Dodgers, Jackie Robinson. So, so, so here's the thing, y'all. I, so, so I wanted to, to stay focused on my topic of the intentionality of student engagement. But then something happened since our last time together. You remember last week and I had the red background. I was in a podcast studio down South Jersey, Central Jersey, wherever it is. And I was introduced to a name that I, I never knew. I was introduced to the name of, of um, Lieutenant Nazario. You know that name. I was introduced to L Lieutenant Lazario. That's the one that was in Windsor, Virginia, who was pulled over by the Windsor police officer in, in, in pepper spray, pe uh, uh, pepper spray sprayed into his face and, and all that. I'm not going to get into all the, the details of that. You've all seen it. But the point is, I was introduced to him and it, and it, and it brought me way down. Right. So you talk about extinguishing a fire. Yeah, that that that's that's the kind of thing that can extinguish the fire. Right. So it brought me way down. But then I guess a day later, we were introduced to the name Dante Wright in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Br Br Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. And then the other day we we're introduced to Adam Toledo. And then throughout just a long extended time, this, 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 this protracted Asian hate, Asian violence. So now all this is happening. Situations of Asian hate, Asian violence just keep on popping up on the news. And then again, Lieutenant Nazario, uh, Dante Wright, and then add, um, Adam Toledo in Chicago. Like, man, how, how, how am I going to do this presentation the way that I plan to do it when this reality is is is, is happening, is unfolding in, in, in real time? How am I going to do it? But then I thought about it, my topic, the intentionality of student engagement. I said, well, there it is, because they go because my topic and the desire to address what's happening in the world while maintaining the integrity of what many of you expected this week. I said, it's right there. I can still do it. So I didn't want to do the broadcast without just bringing into existence their names, that situation to remind us. But then coupled with that, and I'm in the presentation, by the way, I started reading on on social media and I even got some 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 um, some inboxes of educators who were saying we can't discuss Dante Wright. The young man murdered by the by, by by the police officer who thought she had a taser in her hand, but had a Glock had a Glock in her hand. We can't discuss uh, Dante Wright. We can't discuss Lieutenant Nazario. We can't discuss these issues. We we have been given a directive that we can't talk about these things. I said this ties right into my content. So now I'm not doing a, 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 a social justice presentation today because as I as I went through my, my YouTube channel, I said, wow, I have 12 different presentations that address social justice. I have um, week eight, I mean, week five, week eight, week nine, week 12, week 18, week 22, week 37, week 38, week 41, 42, 43, and 44. So I don't need to add another one today, right? But I will say this. I'll say that I want to take that and I want to infuse it into what we're talking about right now. Right. So here's the thing. Let's let's go right to where I said I had educators reaching out to me to say or, or me just reading people's threads and saying we can't talk about it. We can't talk about it. Well, here's the thing. And I, I don't know if I've said this in the past. If I did, um, then forgive me for being redundant. But here's the thing. I'm pointing at my window out at my front window right now. That's the world outside of my house, right? So when you're in a school, you're in the building, you're in the classroom, 
but there's a world outside of the school, right? Now, here's the thing, and here's where I differ from probably a lot of people. I hear I've heard over the years, over the decades, I, I'll hear language such as from an educator, such as we are preparing the children for the real world. Right. We're preparing the children for the real world. And when I hear that, it's like I, I need to cringe like ah, the real world. Then then what are you saying relative to the world in your classroom? Are you saying that that world is not real? And the world outside is real. So, so, so we're saying that these are two different, fundamentally different worlds, the outside world and the inside, the classroom world. No, they're not. They are one and the same. There is no line of demarcation between the world outside and the world inside. And for that, for someone that may want to challenge that, let me explain myself. That world outside, which is comprised of the neighborhood upon which your children live, the community upon which your students live, the homes in which they live, the hospitals they were born in, the homes they were raised in, that's that's their world. The families, the people that they are that they're around, that they're surrounded by, that's their world. So everything about that is their world. So it's not a world that we're preparing them for. They're in it. So now on a school day, assuming that school is back in session, if not, then on the computer, when they enter the class, the school and subsequently the classroom, they didn't stop at the front entrance and say, hold on to whomever greets them. Hopefully it's the principal, but that's a different discussion. But they didn't say, hold on, let me check my world at the door and come in empty or or said differently come in naked right like like everything about them is is checked at the door now i come in just plain right vanilla no as they walked in they brought their world with them and as they brought their world with them they walked into a classroom and brought their world into that classroom so now in that classroom that is their world it's no different it's just that like now, I'm in my world within this table I'm sitting at on this computer, but I haven't divorced myself or detached myself from the broader world. It's just that this occupies my world in this moment. But in, in about two hours from now, I'll be doing the, about three miles of exercise, but I'll still be within my world, but the spacing will be different. But I'm still in my world. I'm still the same guy that was on the broadcast wearing the Dodgers uniform. I have something else on. I have a hat on my head, but it's, I'm still in my world. Do you hear me? So I'm saying for the youngster, hey, teacher out there. In fact, it's really not the teacher. Hey, principal out there. Hey, superintendent out there. How are you telling a youngster that we can't have these discussions when these discussions are a byproduct of his and her world? How are we saying that? How are we saying that this part of your world is not relevant? Now, now someone could be watching right now and you say, but well, wait a minute, Dante Wright, Adam Toledo, Lieutenant Nazario, Asian hate and violence, etc. But that's not their personal world. Oh, let's examine it. It's so interesting how I write notes. And then once I get on with y'all, it's like I ain't looking at my notes. I got something else up here. But stay with me. Listen, watch this, y'all. You say that's not your world. I was reading a post today. One a principal colleague of mine, he might even be on here right now. And he said, at his school, he's a black male principal, six young men, six of his students, I think they were elementary age. They came to him, they approached him. If he's on here, I think his last, his name, his last name is Durden. They, they approached him and said, principal, we're scared. Is anything going to happen to us? Now those six, and then, and then the principal assured them, I got you. I got you covered. I got your back. And the six started crying. I read this this morning. And then he started crying. 
And so, 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 and, and his obviously his crime was due to the compassion for his students in terms of their, you know, just their anxiety about being black boys in America. So they went to their principal. Are we going to be okay? Do we have to be concerned? So then what does this have to do with everything I just said? Everything. Because not only does that principal, again, I think his name is Durden. If he's on here, let me, let me see you. I'm saying to you, his youngsters are not the only ones afraid. I got 30, 30 year old son, 27 year old son. I'm still saying to them, yo, <laughs> keep your eyes open out here. Watch the police. Watch this. Watch that. Be why? Because I'm scared. That's why. I'm not scared for me at all. I'm scared for my sons. My daughter has a young man she's friendly with. I sent him a text like, yo, be vigilant. See, it's a, it's a, because, because I'm scared. If my daughter's riding in the car with him, then I'm scared. See, that's real. So how do we come into a school? How do we come into a classroom and we say, that's not relevant? We can't have that conversation. Are you serious? So I'm saying to anybody on here, my, my guy right here, this is my dude. I got to shout him. Vincent Stallings, principal in East Star. We go back to teenage years. He said, I'm afraid. See, we talking about grown black men who would say, I, I'm scared. See, so we, we are not in position to not engage them in the conversation. But here's the thing. And y'all, if I don't get to these notes today, we'll do them next week, right? <laughs> but here's the thing. I got to talk about social justice for a second. Social justice education. Stay with me, y'all. Hit, in fact, hit the share button. So, somebody is this told the students this week, we, we, or sent a memo to the district or a memo to the staff that we can't talk about these issues. Wake them up. They need to be on here. Call them. Don't even send a. Don't even send a a, a, a share. Call. Them. Hit the phone. Yo, Kafele is speaking directly to you right now. Because I, you told me, you told you said we can't talk about this in school. Listen, let me tell you something. Social justice education. See, when we talk about social justice education, that's not about a teacher ever. Once social justice education is about the teacher, it is no longer social justice education. It is teacher driven indoctrination. See, social justice education is a student centered. I want you to hear me well on this. I'm going to give you the brief definition because longer one, I'm going to take too much time. It's, it's a student centered exploration, examination, and assessment of the world upon which the student exists through his or her own lens let me get that to you one more time because i you know i don't put i don't put powerpoints on the screen i told you why for those of you that have been with me for a while social justice education is a student centered exploration examination assessment of the world upon which the students exist through their own lens. See, so in other words, it's not about as much as I want to impose my values, as much as I'd want to impose my beliefs in the classroom. It's not about me. It's about the student and the world upon which that student exists. How dare us deprive youngster of a discussion, of a conversation about his and her world see because if i'm if, if i'm watching the news if i'm listening to my family if i'm engaged in discussions with my family about issues that are going on and they're impacting youngsters who look like me meaning them how do i not have this discussion when i'm sitting when i'm sitting here paranoid anxious about what's happening 
right? I, I, you, you gotta, you gotta engage me, teacher, because I need some assurance that I'm safe, but I also need some level of understanding. So let's, so, so now this, this ties right into my content. So again, and I'm gonna go. No, look, look, the troopers, y'all just stay with me till I get this done. The, the, those that got things you got to do, I understand, I understand. But, but, but I'm, I'm gonna do this whole, I'm gonna do this whole session. Here we go. Um. My topic, the intentionality of student engagement. Now, last week when I was in the studio, I told you I forgot to bring this with me. And I said it was just one thing. I, I wanted to read it to you. I just wanted to read this verbatim. It's a quick paragraph. It's in. It's on page 83 in um, the assistant principal 50. Let me read it to you. It says, um, engagement comes with achievement. Because many young people do not have parental support in the stands. We were talking about it again. You can serve as, stu as the student support. You are that engagement. You are significant in their lives. You are somebody special to them. You matter. Yes, it will require that you spend more time at school, away from home, and sometimes give up weekends. But always know what your presence at your students' extracurricular events, whether it be sports, athletics, whatever, means to both student, student, both the students participating and those there to support their classmates. Your presence speaks volumes to everyone, everyone there. So, so with that said, I'm ready. I'm on. I'm, I'm using one question from the chapter. And I'm going to use about 11 questions overall, 10 questions overall for the session. If Kim Wilson Daniel is out there, which I, I believe she is, then um, uh, 10 questions, Kim. She's at Kim Wilson Daniel on Twitter to get the notes and Kimberly Wilson Daniel on Facebook so that you can get the notes from this session. Right. So here we go. Um, number 37 said, do I from from the assistant principal 50, do I engage with my students beyond my disciplinary and supervisory? roles, right? Do I engage with students beyond my disciplinary and supervisory roles? Again, that's straight from the book, question number 37. So question number one, and, and in fact, let me let me elaborate on that. Do you engage with your students beyond discipline, beyond a supervisory capacity? Because it is imperative that you do. If, if you're finding, and see, remember, I, I want you to keep in mind, I see Kimberly Wilson, Daniel, good morning to you. I want you to keep in mind, and, and great to see you, and, 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 and we all are appreciative of your work. See, I want you to remember the reason I created this academy, because I said that the, that the assistant principalship was the most misunderstood and underutilized position in all of education. I'll stand on that. I'll debate that with anybody, right? I'll take that one to my grave. But here's the thing. Since so many APs spend so much time, inordinate amounts of time, engaged in discipline, then that means a lot of the conversations emanate out of discipline. So I'm saying that so many of us as APs, we're, we're, yeah, we're engaging students, but it's in the context of disciplining students, preaching to students, counseling students, as opposed to those interactions that have nothing to do with discipline. So I'm asking the question in number 37, do I engage with students beyond my disciplinary role, beyond my supervisory role? So here in question one, in terms of my questions now for the session, think about the totality of your assistant principal leadership. What is that non, what is that one non-negotiable that you have that you've deemed can never ever be circumvented. Let me read that to you again, because I kind of butchered that a little. Think about the totality of your assistant principal uh, leadership. What is that one non-negotiable that you have deemed can never, ever be circumvented, right? So see here, and it could be more than one non-negotiable. I think about first when I was a principal. And I said, my, I had two non-negotiables. Everything else was on the table. But the two that I said I must engage in daily were number one, instructional leadership, as I preached to you back last summer, and student engagement. Those two. Everything else, hey, <laughs> we, we'll do it. But they're not my priority. Right? They're not my non-negotiable. But student engagement. So as a principal, it was those two. 
But as an assistant principal, it was it was solely student engagement because, you know, so, it's instructional leadership because of just because of my, my own circumstances, which I'm not going to get into here, just wasn't on my radar. So student engagement uh, as as an AP. So here I'm asking I'm, I'm looking at the the role of you as leader in conjunction with your teacher. So I always ask myself the question. Is my school a better school because I lead it? You know, then I went as far as to go on and and, and, and write and, and publish a whole book on that question. Is my school a better school because I lead it? But but this title was just an outgrowth of me just looking at my school at the end of the day and reflecting on my day and asking myself the question, is my school a better school because I lead it? That's why I wrote the book, because it was a part of my experience. So in answering the question, it boiled down to, well, who was I as, as instructional leader and who was I as, as, as in terms of student engagement? And if either of the two were deficient, then the answer to the question was, no, it is not a better school because I lead it. But then I'm saying in terms of your leadership in conjunction with your teachers, here's a question for your teachers to ask themselves every day. Are my students at an advantage because I am their teacher? Once again, are my students at an advantage because I am their teacher? I mean, that, that's, that, that's, that's, that's a question that I would argue that they need to ask themselves on a daily basis, right? Are my students at an event? Is there something advantageous about me being the teacher of the students? Does my presence positively alter their trajectory? Does my presence raise the probability for their success? as students and beyond school. So I'm saying here that it's a, it's a question that I would cert, I would strongly recommend that you that, that you bring into your staff meetings, your PLCs and ensure that your teachers are self reflective on a regular basis as they ask themselves the question, are my students at an advantage because I am their teacher. Right. So 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 with that said, I'm asking you just in terms of reflection, what would your teachers say? What would they say? And do you have the audacity to engage them in that conversation? What would they say? How would they feel? Would it make them uncomfortable? That particular question, what role do you play toward ensuring staff understand the power of engagement? See, because when we talk about are my students at an advantage because I'm their teacher as my school, a better school because I lead it. Well, right there at the heart of everything at the core is student engagement, See, student engagement. And I can add climate culture, but we're going to get to it. So what role do 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 you play in your leadership capacity toward ensuring that they understand the power, the power? the power in student engagement. And see, with that student engagement, you know, Josh Tovar is on the call, Principal Tovar, and, and his famous words, you know, like a lot of times, you, there's certain there are people who, there's certain words that are just their words, they own them. Like like when, when people say, bam, that, you, you, a lot of times people think Principal Cafe, intentionality. People think of Principal Cafe, because those are, those are like my words. But, but, but Josh, Principal Tovar, he's got this, he's got this expression. He didn't create it, but 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 I certainly attribute it to him because he says it more than anyone I know on the planet. He always says they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. We have all used that, but 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 Josh Tovar, who's on this call, owns that. It's like he took. He said, "Look, this is mine. They do not care how much I know until they know." how much I care. See, that see that that matters. That that matters. I mean, I'm trying to keep you guys on the screen here too. That matters. So so now let me go to number 2. 2 says, do I engage my students outside 
of my disciplinary and supervisory capacity. So to mirror the question number 37, I want to jump into the words climate and culture versus discipline, right? I know I've said this before, but, but I'm using it in a different context now. See, discipline. If that's if you're finding that the bulk of your your conversations with young people is centered around discipline, then 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 then, then you got some work to do. Right. But see, sometimes we try to we try to resolve discipline issues. Now, I shouldn't say sometimes, most times we try to resolve discipline issues with discipline strategies. And when we try to resolve discipline issues with discipline strategies, when discipline is not actually the issue. Then we run into all sorts of problems. See, in other words. Youngster misbehaves. Youngster lacks focus. Youngster engages in behaviors that you that are undesirable to you. Okay, I, I get it. But that might not be a discipline problem. That's micro. Remember we said micro? That might be a macro issue. Climate and culture. See, climate, you know, there's a word, and I don't mean to be political on this one, but you know, we, when we always say something superseded something else, we say, so I might, in the old days, I might say, so culture trumps discipline. But like, I don't, I don't even like using that word anymore, right? I'm not being political. I just don't, right? So, so, so you know what I mean, because I just, I just kind of leaked it out there. But, but cl climate culture supersedes discipline. See, if you got, if you got rules and consequences chart, like on the wall says rules and, and consequences, and, and this is your area of focus, when you get to school Monday, those of you who are back, like, like rip them things down. Right. I'm being somewhat facetious. Right. But but rip them things down because it's not about rules and consequences. It's about a culture in the building that's conducive to young people engaging. And, and, and performing the way that you would expect. So 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 therefore, the words are not rules and consequences. The rules are expectations, values and norms. Those are the words. So so how can I structure my classroom in a way that that the values dictate be that the the norms of the classroom dictate behavior, that the expectations of the classroom dictate behavior, that that the standards that we've set dictate behavior, not the rules. Because the rules say, here's what you cannot do. And if you do do it, then here are the consequences. Here's how I'm going to punish you. That doesn't engender motivation and inspiration. Right? There's nothing, there's nothing about that that gets a young person excited. So sometimes we got to change the language. So when I say, do I engage with my students outside of my disciplinary supervisory capacities? And number two, I'm talking here. We got to look, examine. Here's the, yeah, that's, I was going to say, look, I'm going to use the word exam. We got to examine the culture of this school and what level of impact did we, the administration and us, the entire team, what impact we have on the culture. And, I, you know, I reduce culture to a one word definition, the lifestyle of the building. Right. And then the climate, the mood of the building. See that that's that's what that's what you want to dictate. Like I, I told you before, I, I use this example a few weeks ago. I'm going to do it again. I could sit on this 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 computer and I could yell into my camera into my microphone that I'm on fire. And I don't think any of you will think like I've lost my mind. Like y'all say, oh, that's what he does. That's normal on his broadcast. But I can walk like 20 feet outside, maybe a little bit more than 20 feet, like about 50 feet and go outside on my sidewalk. And imagine I just stand there and say, I'm on fire. Man, them people be like calling the, 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 the ambulance on me. Like what's happening to Kefele? Actually, I don't even know if they know my name. Right. But but that's another story. But 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 they were like, because we don't know him that way. He's the he's a quiet guy. He just walks up the street minding his business. I don't even know this dude. See, so so because the culture outside 
will not allow for me to engage in that kind of behavior. But the culture just about 30 feet inside sitting at my desk on my computer says, it's all right, because we know that's what you do. So see, I'm saying here, well, it works the same way in the classroom. You got to look at the culture and maybe the culture is speaking the wrong language and thereby you're engaging youngsters in disciplinary engagement or discussion conversations. You got to examine it. Right. So with that, I'm moving along nicely. Number three. Why do I engage and I'm putting emphasis on the word why? Why do I engage with my students outside of disciplinary supervisory capacities? So I'm saying, so so if you do, why do you? Or if you don't, why don't you? And and some of that, in terms of just what I was talking about before with Dante Wright and and and, and Adam uh, Toledo and 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 Lieutenant Nazario, um, it may be because there's some there's some there's some some weird politics in your school that don't allow you to engage, right? Outside of the, 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 the issue I made with, with, uh, with discipline, right? Versus culture, right? And then there could be a multiplicity of other reasons as to why you don't. Some of those reasons could be something you may need to look into your mirror about because it may be some issues with you, right? If I, if I can be honest with you, like, like maybe you're not comfortable. Let's say for example, you're, 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 a um, a high school administrator and the youngsters are, are are into their world, into their space. They're big, they're tall, they're mature and all that. And maybe there's somebody, maybe hopefully not here, but if so, then I want you to learn from this. And you're not in com- you're not comfortable engaging them outside of the formal education space. Like you're not comfortable jumping, like crossing that, that, that line and now engaging with them about other aspects of life. Right. Well, I'm saying to you, that's not that's not a student issue. That's a that's a you issue. That's a I need to go to my mirror and I need to discover why am I not comfortable with talking to my students about other issues and concerns, topics, etc. What what's what's stopping me? Right. Why am I not comfortable with sitting down at the cafeteria table during a lunch period? And engaging with my young people. What 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 is what is that about me that I'm lacking the comfort to have this conversation? I see, like I see Christina Wallace on here. She's from she's a local from Newark. And I and, and although I didn't work in the school with her, I, I know enough about her to know that she was that person. You know, and you know I'm right, Christina Wallace, that she could sit down and and and, and mind you, she happens to be white, but she was in a school of black and Latino students. But she but but she got along with them students just fine. And the students at Barringer High School loved her. I know that. Right. Because because she didn't have those hang ups about going to those youngsters. Christy, I see you say yes. See, she didn't have those hang ups about engaging with those youngsters. Right. So and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it's not the youngsters. Sometimes. And Mr. Delphine says she was my teacher. Wow, that's small world. See, so we have to, sometimes we got to go here. We got to go here. And because in so many cases, the issue is not external. The issue is internal. We got to look within, right? We got to look within. So let me keep going. I'm, I'm moving along. There's so much more I could say on each of these, but I'm trying to move along. Um, what, number four. What types of conversations am I able to have with my students? Man, I want to have pretty much everything except for for those areas which would just be inappropriate for me to have conversation with them, obviously. Right. If it's inappropriate, I don't want to have them. But 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 when we talk about saying, you know, I I have an interest in in history and politics and current events. I want to have those discussions. I, I want to talk about sports. I want to talk about life. Right. I want to talk about career. I want to talk about goal setting, right? I want to talk about having a plan. I want, I want, I, I just want to talk, I want to talk about being a man. I want to talk about being a black man, right? I want to be, if, if I'm Latino, I want to talk about what is it, what does that mean to be a, La- a Latinx man? If I'm a Latinx man, what, what does that mean? Because see, 
it's easy to talk about what it is to be a man, what it is to be a human being. But when you but when you add race to the conversation, well, that that changes the conversation. To be a man and to be a black man are not the same conversation. To be a black man, I got to put on armor before I walk outside. That's I mean, and that's I'm just I'm just keeping it real. I don't think there's a black man on this call that will say you lying, Principal Cafe. I don't think there's a black woman on this call that will say you lying, Principal Cafe. I don't agree with you. I don't I don't think that person's on this call. As an African American man, I have to put on armor. And I got to hope that my, my children have their armor because it's a different reality out here. So, so, I, so, so as, a, as a leader, I don't want to be in a school where, I, where that's a taboo conversation. I can't talk to my students about that because if I can't talk, have that, hear me somebody, y'all got to hear this one. If I can't have that conversation, I don't need to be in that school. I will give them my letter of resignation. If, if, if I get to if, get to a point where I cannot have open and honest conversations about survival and reality and development, despite the obstacles, if I can't have that conversation, then then here, here, here. let me write my letter of resignation. I'm gone. See you. Right. That because, because, see, for me and I hope for all of you, it's not just about content area. Of course, this conversation can be a part of content area, and and, and that and that fall, and that's consistent with what social justice education is. But I'm saying to you, and I might say since I keep referencing, it, and you know, I got the book coming out on May 26, the Equity and Social Justice Education 50, where I have time to elaborate. So I'm saying it's got to be in there. I got to have that conversation. You've got to have that conversation. So number four said, what types of conversations am I able to have with my students? And I might add to that. What types of conversations am I comfortable having with my students? Right. So, again. You got to you, you got to look at you. You got to look at you. I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you something. Um. This, this, I, I guess this, this is going to be a little awkward, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. You know, I didn't, I didn't create this, this, this platform to, to come on here and play games. I'm a heterosexual man, and that's my world. So when I became a high school principal, and 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 and, and I saw some other dynamics outside of uh, being heterosexual amongst students, I needed to understand that. I didn't understand it. Matter of fact, I can go down to middle school level. I didn't understand that that wasn't my world. So I had to grow. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear the word I just used. I had to grow in that area. But when I got to the high school level, when I became a high school principal, that's where my growth really occurred. But let me tell you who my, my teachers were. My teachers were the students. They taught me. They, they sat me down. And they let me in on their world. Now, I don't, now, am I talking about a sexual conversation? No. I'm talking about a sexual orientation. They sat me down. And they made me understand. Because in their eyes, I was, I was 50 years behind them. Right? So, so they made, not, not, not some joking, laughing conversation. But I'm talking, I'm, we, we're talking junior and senior young ladies, uh, particularly, who explained to me what I what what wasn't a part of my world? I learned from them, but I was open enough to learn from them. See, so and Superintendent Finch makes the point: LGBTQ students need to be safe at school. And wow, what a safe environment when I can engage my principal in that conversation, in addition to educating and enlightening. My principal, who at that point knew nothing. It just wasn't on my radar. See, so I know I don't know, normally get into a, cop, a topic like this, but I, I got to keep it real, y'all. You know, I can't I can't play games on, on this platform because I didn't create this to play games or else or else I, I, I'd say that this was the the, 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 the comedy hour. Right. It's we, we, we're talking about serious stuff. And what I just said to you, there's not a person on this screen. 
that doesn't have the same challenge within your building. I don't. I think and when I say challenge, only because if you've got people in the building who have their own values that run that, that, that are diametrically opposed to some of the values of your students, then it becomes a challenge for you when 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 they intersect. Right. So that's the context that I'm using challenge. But as as leader or as teacher or as adult in the building. You and I have to have understanding, and that comes through engagement. See, which is our topic: engagement. Number um, number five. Do my students see? This is a big one, y'all. Do my students seem genuinely interested in having conversations with me? Oh, that's that's I, I that one forced me to pause. Do my students? seem genuinely interested in having conversations with me. Hmm. See, it's one thing for me to be on the call this morning, and I'm talking about the need for you to engage them. But now I just inverted it. But do they want to engage you? Do they seem genuinely interested in having conversations with you? See, you you may listen to me and get fired up and like, yo, I'm he, that he's right. I'm not talking to my students. I'm not having a con I'm not having these con I'm talking about discipline. You've got to behave in class. You got to follow the rules. The, 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 the referral says that you spoke multiple times. No, no, but but you got to ease out of that. So now as you have so now you listen to me and you saying, man, Kafele. He's right about that. He's right about that. Right. So now you fired up. You ready to jump back in. But now youngsters like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> like, yo, I, I ain't trying to hear from you. You just suspended me last week. I'm, I'm, I'm You just put me in detention. I'm not, I don't want to talk to you. So now you may have a barrier between you. I used to say wall, but that's another word I'm struggling with. You know, I'm, you know, the, I'm struggling with wall. I'm struggling with the word Trump. I'm struggling with the word uh, tremendous. Right? That's another one. And there's, there's a few more in here, but but I, but I digress. Right. So so here I'm saying to you. You've got to position yourself. Where student wants to talk to you. Right. Student wants to talk to you. Student wants to engage with you. So. That's why I keep this mirror handy. I do presentations all week long and this mirror sits right here because there's a need for you to go to your mirror and ask yourself, what is it about me that the students don't want to talk to me about anything? That's not their problem. That's you. See, that's internal. Those are some things as a leader you have to work on. Because because you 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 have to be able to position yourself that youngsters are looking forward to engaging with you. Look, youngsters are looking forward to conversation with you, right? I'm moving along quickly. Number six, have I positioned myself to be able to add value to the lives of my students? So is there something about me? Is there something about my presence? Is there something about my in my conversation? Is there something about my engagement that adds value to them? See. That's that engagement, because it's not just you standing in close proximity to the student. It's, 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 it's you, it's your words. And youngster wants to hear from you. Youngster wants to talk to you. Youngster wants to learn from you. Youngster wants to grow from you. Youngster wants to develop from you. Well, that all of that comes into fruition according to how you've positioned yourself in that youngster's life through the intentionality of student engagement. Critical. Let's keep moving. I'm moving along. So in the climate culture conversation, and I'm, 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 I'm actually uh, almost done. In the climate culture conversation, I speak frequently about the intentionality of what students see, hear, feel, and experience. Once again, it's, it's, it's just normal speech for me that I talk about the intentionality of what students see, hear, feel, and experience while they're in a school, while they're in a classroom. And you've heard me say this in the past, that I don't want to just have random things in terms of stimuli on the wall 
for them to see. If, if, if they see it, there's an objective tied to it. There's something I'm trying to accomplish because as a classroom teacher, whatever's on those walls is an extension of my of, of me as a teacher. If I'm a building principal, then whatever's on those walls is an extension of my leadership, not just decoration of a school. So with that said, I want to look at those four areas and then I'm going to be I'm going to be done. So the intentionality of what they see, what they hear, what they feel and what they experience. Let's jump into it. Number one, the intentionality of what they see. Now, since I'm talking to a leadership audience primarily, I'm going to talk about the, the, the hallways. Right. What do they see in your hallways? Right. Beyond walls. When I go into a school. And particularly a secondary school where the, where the rationale is the students are older, so they don't need all of that, that stimuli on the walls. They don't need the motivation, that type of thing. I say, oh, no, they're older. They're a little taller. But the needs are the needs. The needs are there. The needs are be the need to be inspired are there. The need to be informed is still there. Right. So so I'm saying here that although they're older. I would ar I would dare argue that, in, that that a high school and a middle school should look like an elementary school where you see all that stimuli to motivate youngsters on a wall. It, it, it shouldn't come down because we assume that now they're self-motivated. No, they still need it and they're going to need it throughout life. Right. So let's move into it. I, I, I got to do each of the I got these 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 bullet points. I'm just going to kind of race through them. I'm not going to get deep with them, but subject area students of the month. You remember me talking about that recently, so I don't need to go into it. I want to be able to see that. Other awards that you come up with. I want to I want to see that because I'm using those awards to motivate young people. So I don't mean a participation award. I mean, identifying strengths of young people that, that need to be rewarded or awarded. And then having a space on a wall where I can award that youngster, where I can recognize that youngster, where I can celebrate that youngster. So other awards, student goals. Although the goal setting is something that I that, that I that I use primarily in the classroom, I also would like to have them outside of the classroom door where they can be seen that everybody in that building has goals and a plan to achieve them. Student work samples. Student action pics, pictures where students are working, but we got the pictures in the hallway or the cafeteria where, where we're just giving the youngsters a sense of ownership, what they see. College pennants and banners throughout the building where we're selling that, that we believe in college, but also career option pics or, or, or posters or charts on the wall where we're also promoting various different careers and trades, etc. But just this, this learning environment that's got all of these different goals and stimuli of what we want young people to gravitate to. Quotes, quotes from famous people, but quotes from non-famous people, right? Like me, just ordinary people. It's, it's amazing when I walk into a school and they got quotes of, of myself from books or things they heard me say on video, whatever, on the walls of the hall of the hallways. I'm like, wow. This work is worth it, you know, just to see something like that, that, that a quote is value. And then they tell me, yeah, we use the quote. Right. So quotes from people who are well known, but quotes from people right there in the building, but not just hanging on the wall, but but us bringing students over to the wall and teaching from the quote, as I talked about in different contexts throughout the academy. Historical figures, historical and contemporary that look like your youngsters the cleanliness of the building that matters what they see you put me in some fil dirty filthy school it's probably going to yield some dirty filthy product right meaning me meaning meaning the education that you receive that 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 the cleanliness of the building matters the clean the the the, clean the, the the cleanliness of of everything about that building it just matters because they see it. So if, so, so if the students attend that school and the staff works in that school, give them a sparkling clean school. So again, the intentionality of what they see, I could go further with that, but I wanna, I wanna focus on the other, see, I said hallway, but there's another component that I wanna focus on, you. The intentionality of what the student sees relative to who and what they see in you. I got a few things here. Let me let me let me go through them and then I'm a, I'm just about done. 
Your appearance matters. Your appearance. From, from head to toe, your appearance, it matters. I'm not going to get into specificity. I'm talking to an adult audience. You understand what I mean. Your appearance matters. If you want to be an assistant principal, then all I'm saying to you is look like an assistant principal. If you are an assistant principal, then all I'm saying is look like an assistant principal. If you are a principal, then all I'm saying is look like a principal. I don't want to look at you. And then I'm not sure if I'm looking at the principal or a, a, a teacher or the principal or the custodian or the principal, or security, or the principal, or the head coach, right, or the principal, or a parent who walked in, because it happens. I've been in that place where I'm looking at the principal, but I'm not sure. I think that's the principal, but I'm not sure because of the appearance. Look like you're the principal. Look the part. That's all I'm saying. I won't say put on a shirt and tie, men or business suit. Well, I won't go that far. I mean, if you have me, if you engage me in a private conversation, I will. But I won't do it on this recording. But you meet with you, you send me an email, Principal Fairley. What's what's your suggestion? One of the young men, you what's your suggestion on how what I wear? You can I wear the, the, the polo shirt with the school name on it? This if you send me the watch, if you send me the private email, the, the private inbox, I'm gonna say to you, no, wear that on Fridays, maybe put on the suit and the tie. Make sure your shine, your shoes are shining so bright I can see my reflection in them, right? That's make sure your shirt is crisp. That's what I'm gonna say in the private conversation. But since I'm not private right now, I'm just saying your appearance matters, right? So I think I made my point. Number two, your accessibility matters. We're talking about the intent, the intentionality of what students see. So when they see you, what do they see? See, Josh Tovar said no T-shirt. See, I'm old school, y'all. I'm like old school. And how old school am I? I'm like old, old, old school. I can't, I, I, I mean, I, I just can't fathom. I don't, I don't understand a principal walking around a school in a T-shirt. See, the principalship is an executive level position. So, so all that talk that, you know, that rationale, I'm just trying to be relatable to this. Nah, nah, nah. You, I, I was relatable with a, with a suit on. I was relatable with a tie on. I was relatable with my shoes shining. I don't have to put on some jersey or some, some shirt that says the name of the school with short sleeves on to be relatable. My relatability is not going to come from what I wear. My relatability is going to come through, through who I am. So I'm going to uphold the principalship and I'm going to wear my suit and tie. My students never saw me without a tie except on Saturday when we had a basketball game on a Saturday. They, that's the only time outside of that. They never saw me without a tie because I'm not coming there without a tie. Because I'm going to uphold that position. But I'm not mad at someone that dresses down on Friday. I'm not mad at that. I get it. I get the real world. I get 2021. But that can't be your norm. But I'm talking to you as if I'm having the private conversation, aren't I? <laughs> let me let me sip that. that. I'm giving you the the private stuff in, on, over the public the public airways, right? Let me let me let me stop that. Let me keep going. So, what do they see? Your accessibility matters. Do they see that you are accessible? Next, your availability matters. Do they see that you are someone available to them for various different reasons? Next, your approachability matters. Man, are you someone approachable? Because see, if you walk around the school like this, this you all day. Mean mugging. And now I'm supposed to be able to approach you. I'm scared of you. I'm like running when I see you because you mean mugging all day. Walking all fast, man. I miss her. Uh, I'm gone. Look, I'm busy right now. Don't you see I'm busy? I'm trying to get to this class. See, I mean, you can't, you, you got to be approachable. It's okay to smile. 
<laughs> it's okay to, for them to see you laugh as long as you have positioned yourself in a way that they understand who you are, right? <laughs> the Stalin said, don't smile till Christmas, right? Somebody, so see, some people teach that. They'll teach it to the new teacher. Don't smile on that first. The new teacher, don't let them see you smile. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't even be laughing at that because it is not funny, right? Next, the intentionality of what they see. Do they see someone who is supportive? Mm. That you support them, whomever they are, that you support them, right? Next, do they see someone who's resourceful? Oh, man. You you able you able to provide for their needs, man. They got various different needs, and here you are. You're resourceful not only for your for your students, but your staff, the parents, and the community. Next, do, uh, the intentionality of what they see. Do they see someone where who 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 listening matters? Someone who has listening skills. Oh man, it matters. Are you one that listens to your students or is it like they're talking to you, you putting up a good show, but it's going in one ear and coming out the other? They know. They'll figure that out. They will peep your card in a short period of time. Right. So make sure that at, in terms of the intention of what they see, because once they once they detect that you're not a listener, the word gets around. They ain't listening to you. She ain't listening to you. Right. They, they, they know that 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 becomes that that goes on on the along the grapevine. Right. Next, your demeanor matters. The intentionality of what they see. What's your demeanor? Your overall demeanor in the presence of your students. It matters in terms of how you are being perceived by them. The intentionality of what they see. Do they see commitment from you? Do they see diligence out of you? Do they see reliability out of you? Do they see perseverance coming from you in working with them. There may be a student that just doesn't just doesn't get it immediately in terms of behavior, in terms of focus, in terms of being being serious about education, whatever it is. It, it may take student a while, may take months, may take the whole year. It may not be till next year. But what have you demonstrated? Have you demonstrated your perseverance in working with that young person? trustworthiness oh that's a big one a a a, a principal like this this the youngster now talking to a principal how is it that i told you x y and z and the counselor repeated it to me last week i thought i told you that in confidence i thought that was just something i shared with you why is my counselor speaking about this to me that youngster can't trust you anymore. And now when that youngster sees you, that's what that youngster sees. Untrustworthiness. See, the intentionality of what they see. Your integrity matters. Oh, couple that with trustworthiness. Your integrity. Once you lose your integrity, you might as well find another job, maybe in another state, maybe in another world. Your integrity matters. Next, your visibility matters. Are you visible? Are you just a voice over the PA, but no one ever sees you? And lastly, your leadership matters. We're talking about the intentionality of what they see. Do they see a leader? Do they see visibility? Do they see integrity? Do they see trustworthiness? Do they see perseverance? Do they see reliability and et cetera, right? I'm almost done. Number eight, the intentionality of the intentionality. How, no, how intentional am I about what my students hear? This one's going to be short. The last three are short. How intentional am I about what my students hear? So in other words, I'm saying to you, I'm reminding you that your words matter, right? Because that's what they're going to hear. Your words, your words matter. Number nine, how intentional am I about what my students feel? Your compassion matters. Let me say it again. Your compassion, your level of care, your level of empathy, it matters. And number 10, finally, how intentional am I about what my students experience? Your leadership matters. So if you're, you're in an elementary school and your students are going to be with you for six years, kinder, kindergarten to fifth grade, that six years, your overall leadership 
matters. They're going to be with you in middle school three years. Your leadership matters. They're going to be with you for four years in high school. Your leadership matters. So regardless of what, le what level, regardless of, of, uh, of how long they're going to be in that school with you, your overall leadership matters when we talk about the experience, the intentionality of the experience. And then when those youngsters are older, later in life, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and reflect back on you, what will be the reflection when they think about your leadership? Your leadership matters. And your leadership cannot be confined or reduced to a disciplinary. Your, the intentionality of student engagement must be a priority. With that said, my parting question, I'm done. My parting question, what measures will you take to enhance student engagement in your school with your students? Again, what measures will you take to enhance student engagement with your students in your school? I told you before, I'll tell you again, next week, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, next week, ASCD, the, the Empowered Principal Conference or in, uh, Symposium, I'm keynoting that on the 21st. I'd love to see you in the building. Go to ASCD.org and register, the Empowered Principal Institute. I'm keynoting that April 21st. I think that's Wednesday. Tomorrow night at nine o'clock, I'll be on eight black hands with my man, Principal Sharif El Mecki out of Philly and his crew. Nine o'clock, I'll share it to my page. Just go to Principal Cafele, uh, Principal Cafele at Facebook, um, and you'll see me right there waiting for you. Um, and then my Leadership Institute, School Leadership Institute with Principal Cafele, July 13 and 14, 1230 to 330 both days. Nominal fee, not much. Go to principalcafele.com. And scroll down to my announcements and you'll see it right there. It says fourth annual school leadership institute with Principal Kefele. My new book, The Equity and Social Justice Education 50, be released May 26, but it's available right now for pre-order. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, at ASCD.org. And then the books for the two for the academy. You can get these in your hands right now. Amazon Prime, you'll have it by Monday. The Assistant Principal 50 and the Aspiring Principal 50. Get them both. Be sure to subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel, Virtual AP Leadership Academy. But when I get to the second the second 50, I'm going to be using my Principal Kefele Speaks to Educators channel. So make sure you subscribe to that if you haven't already. Again, Principal Kefele Speaks to Educators we're going to be doing 50 weeks of of uh, equity and social justice coming from the book, The Equity and Social Justice 50. So starting in the end of May, I'm going 50 weeks of equity <laughs> and, and social justice education. But I'm going to use the YouTube channel, Principal Kefele Speaks, to educators along with my Twitter and Facebook. So subscribe to both. And with that said, folks, I appreciate you being here. I'm early. It's 12, 13. Not too bad. I mean, some days it's one o'clock, right? So I thank you for being here. We'll see you next week. We'll finish out chapter five. I mean, chapter six. So I'll see you at 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Tell a friend, tell a colleague. Have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. But I might add to that, be safe. Keep your mask on. Stay six feet apart. Keep your hands clean. And for some of you out there, watch your surroundings. Because it's 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 kind of brutal out here in America right now, right? So watch your surroundings. With that said, peace, peace, thumbs up, then cock your fist back and count the three. One, two, three. Bam. Appreciate y'all. I'll see you next Saturday, eleven o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time.